now that I'm done building out the Bone Spirit Necromancer, I need to farm a lot of gold so I can respec my Paragon boards, my skill tree, recreate all my gear, upgrade it all. I need a lot of materials. So what I'm doing right now is speed farming. And you might have noticed, either if you watched my most recent Bone Spirit Necromancer build guide, or if you checked out the Max Roll guide once I have it updated, while I have Blood Artisan's Curus as one of the gear options, and while I cover how to incorporate it, I actually think that this item is completely a trap if you're trying to legitimately push endgame nightmare dungeons. Because if you look at it, you'll see that it only has a single stat that really attributes to any survivability at all. And that is a roll between 4.6 to 10.9 armor. And if you've watched my most recent video where I point out just how much damage reduction you need and you will still get one tapped in higher tier dungeons, you legitimately cannot afford to not wear a chest piece that says multiple instances of damage reduction. But oddly enough, I'm wearing the Blood Artisan's Curus right now and I'm about to go into a nightmare dungeon. Why is that? So right now, I'm in a tier 41 Nightmare Dungeon. That means that monsters here are only level 95. That means that they're only seven levels higher than me. And I can effectively ignore them for all intents and purposes. You'll see they'll hit me a couple times, sure, but their damage kind of doesn't matter. I walk up smooth and I just blow them up. But I'm wearing the Blood Artisan's Curious Armor. And that's because when you are speed farming, you're typically going to be speed farming in things that aren't the highest possible difficulty content that you can do. Because clearing higher nightmare tier dungeons, all it really does is get you some bragging points, test the metal of your build, and also get you better glyph experience. But you don't really need that when you're speed farming, when I'm looking for materials, when I'm looking for salvaging, when I'm trying to get as many aspects as quickly as possible. But while speed farming, you're looking to output the most damage possible as quickly as possible. And Blood Artisan's Curus literally says output more damage for free. They're already picking up the Blood Orbs for the best version of survivability and being able to generate your Fortify on the build. And Blood Artisan slots in very easily to make it so that when you're doing these big pulls on huge density, all of a sudden you're able to output a lot more damage a lot more quickly. And that's legitimately where I currently see Blood Artisans as a tool on the Bone Spirit Necromancer. Now, I also think that on other builds that just have more inherent survivability, like a Blood build, it might slot in more easily. But when you were talking about the Blood Artisans Curus, specifically on Bone Spirit, where it gets the biggest bonus possible, I don't think you should use it if your intent is to be able to push the hardest content that you possibly can, because I don't think that you'll be able to survive with it. But if you're looking to speed up your clear speed and kind of alleviate some of those issues and like kill all dungeons or just trying to like get more kills more quickly, it's absolutely a great tool for you to use on the build since you don't need to worry about survivability on these lower tier dungeons or in just plain overworld content. If you're doing hell tides, you probably shouldn't be dying to the random monsters. Going and doing the world boss, you probably aren't going to die unless your build is already suffering from some other major lack. And what this thing allows you to do is add a little bit more speed farming potential to the Bone Spirit build so that you can actually participate, farm well, get a lot of resources, get a ton of gold by selling stuff, uh, look for a lot of options for like aspects if you're farming for a new build or you're looking for perfect aspects. This is really where I feel like it's it fits in very nicely, right? There were two extra shamans. They happen to be outside of the range of my initial bone spirit. There are enough blood orbs around so that when I went and picked them up, all of a sudden, boom, I'm spending out a ton of extra bone spirits for free. And there you go. So while I initially thought that Blood Artisan's Curus was just completely a trap, right? Because my only focus was really getting into and farming higher nightmare tier dungeons. I've realized that it absolutely has a place in the ecosystem of itemization for the Bone Spirit Necromancer, and more specifically in general, like the greater conversation of whether or not unique items are good. Maybe not every single one of them is meant to help you push into the highest tier content. Maybe they're supposed to speed up specific parts of the game that you don't typically think about or try to optimize for. I hope that this helps though, just kind of highlighting the idea of how you can use it and why I continue to include notes about it in the endgame Bone Spirit Guide on Max Roll, because it has a purpose, 
Again, I'm going to get it updated. So if you see this video first and the guide isn't updated, I promise you it's going to be happening shortly. But there you go. I hope it helps. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it I hope it stopped you from clicking that salvage button a little bit too early or potentially throwing away a useful item. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.